Hi. Many people are concerned that if they load their photographs or documents onto a genealogy site, they will lose complete control of them. It's a common complaint on sites like Ancestry that other genealogists use images without crediting the person who loaded them in the first place. Now this bothers some people more than others, but I know it's a concern for many. Now although this can never be stopped completely, one way is to give the originator some control is to annotate a photograph or document just like this. So in this video I will show you three easy ways to add annotations to your images. Annotation is a way of adding something directly to the image, so the information stays with it even if it's copied or downloaded. Here are two examples of my grandmother's photograph, with text either on the photo itself or below the picture. I also added a small logo to the images so that even if somebody crops the photograph, it will stay with it. And here's another example of a family will. In addition to the citation annotated to the photograph, I've also added a watermark and logo. There are many ways to mark up your media, either directly from your phone or via your computer. Today I'll be working with my Windows laptop, but whichever system you're using, the process is very similar. For the first example, I'll use the Windows Paint app, which has been part of Windows for a long time. It's free and pretty basic, but it gets the job done. I believe the Mac has a very similar program called Paintbrush. The first step is to open the program, and then I would open Drawing Screen. I then load the picture I wish to annotate, in this case of my beautiful grandmother. Once loaded, I will select the text icon and write an annotation for this image directly into the text box. I can move the text around and select various colours. I can also add a small icon to the image, so I just copy and paste the icon directly onto the photograph and save the photograph under a different name. Now I have the original and an annotated copy that I can load into Ancestry. Another method would be to use some kind of office software. There are plenty available. I have Microsoft, so I can use PowerPoint, but most work in a very similar way. In this case, I've opened up a new PowerPoint file, created the text and loaded the icon. So all I need to do is insert the image and group them all together using the group function. Most systems work this way and then save the image as an annotated copy just like I did last time. Alternatively, I can use third party watermark software to annotate several images with the same text or watermark. Now there's several simple programs are available with free trials that you can test out. Just be careful to choose one that has been validated. Now the key reason to use this type of software is that you can batch images together. In this case, I can either choose an image or a folder. I choose a folder with some city images and load them into the program. Now these programs come with many other options to manage your media too. I simply add the text I wish to add. I can change its color or position and this will be applied to every image you've loaded up. You then run the program, the changes are applied, and then finally ensure you save the annotated image to another location. And there you have it, very quickly. In this case, I was working with photograph, but it's exactly the same process for an image of a document or any other image. I hope this video has helped you to feel in control of your media by adding annotation. Of course, please like and share and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.